Thousand Autumns, is a Meng Shi Shi novel. This is an audiobook made by fans for other fans. Disclaimer. The main couple of the story is made up of two men, if you don't like it don't listen. Thank you. Remember. Subscribe and click the bell to stay updated on all the new releases. Enjoy. Chapter 79 Shen Qiao did not expect that he would do such a thing, so he was quite startled. The other man moved with lithe and graceful steps. A moment passed, and they had already left the small grove and reached the foot of the mountain, following an upwards path that led to the opposite side of the mountain. Shen Qiao's mind went blank for a good moment, before asking, we're going up the mountain. On the other side is a temple, hidden within the mountain itself. It's been abandoned for several years, Yan Wuxi said. Shen Qiao was suspicious. You seem to be familiar with this place. After I battled with Kui Yuang that year, I had entered seclusion in this mountain, Yan Wuxi said. Shen Qiao suddenly understood, but did not ask any more questions. He was indeed very tired. Earlier, he had fought with all of his strength against four people. Bai Rong, Yan Xiao, and Bei Yun had all come at him, each one stronger than the other, and this wasn't including Xiao Esi, who had been severely wounded by Yan Wuxi. With Shen Qiao's present internal strength, even if he possessed the realm of Jian Xian, it still wouldn't mean that he could escape completely unscathed. Though Yan Wuxi's pace was rather quick, it was also very steady. Shen Qiao could feel the warmth of his body through the fabric of his clothing. Without the strength to think much more, he fell asleep without realizing it. The next time that he opened his eyes, he found that he was no longer surrounded by a thicket of trees like earlier, but instead what looked to be a temple. Due to how old it was, the incense sticks within the temple had already been broken in half. They didn't even know where the incense burner could have been. The statue of Buddha had been severed at the head, and around them were large nets of dust. However, where Shen Qiao had slept was clean. Beneath him was a curtain, pulled down from two nearby pillars. Though it was rather old and tattered, it wasn't nearly as bad as sleeping on the cold stone floors. He rested his back against the wall for a moment. Though he had not sustained any heavy wounds from earlier, the internal wounds he sustained from battling with Switting had been somewhat irritated, which resulted in his present condition, leaving him unable to utilize his full strength in battle. This was also the reason why he was unable to kill Yan Xiao. Afterwards, with Bei Yun being added into the battle as well, this opportunity was, in the end, lost to him. Shen Qiao dizzily rubbed his head, and sighed softly. A cool hand brushed past him. Shen Qiao was completely unprepared. A tremble passed through his body as he felt the ice-cold fingers make contact with his skin. What are you sighing for? Yan Wuxi was sitting beside him. He was reading the sheet of silk in his other hand. Shen Qiao narrowed his eyes at the sheet, scrutinizing it. Sure enough, it was the lost volume of the Zuyang Ce that the man had taken from Chen Gong that day. He wanted to speak, but could only watch as Yan Wuxi turned over his hand and placed the sheet of silk in the fire. In an instant, it was swallowed by the flames. Shen Qiao was silent. Yan Wuxi turned and caught sight of Shen Qiao's expression. He did not wait for the man to ask, and instead spoke, I've already memorized the contents. What use would there be if I left it? As a last resort, you could have given the sheet of silk to He Huan Sek so as to escape them, Shen Qiao said. Why won't you even give yourself this way out? Even if I did give them the sheet of silk, do you think that they'll believe that it's really the last volume? Yan Wuxi asked. Shen Qiao frowned and did not speak. Yan Wuxi smiled unkindly, 
In the past, the Ryu sect had a secret technique that I'm sure even you haven't heard about. In truth, it is simply the Moyin shakes and utilized at its utmost perfection. If you can achieve this, then you can control the minds of others and force them to speak the truth without their realizing it. If it were my choice to make, I would much rather decide to use this method of getting information I want to hear, rather than believe some characters written on a sheet of silk. Then if Yan Shao and the others take advantage of your greatly reduced cultivation, capture you and take you back to Hehuan sect, they could easily have you recite the contents of the lost volume of the Zhu Yang Si, Shen Qiao said. That's right, Yan Wuxi said. My worth to them cannot even compare to that of a corpse. Additionally, with possession of the Zhu Yang Si and my position as the Zongju of Huanyu sect, they can easily control Huanyu sect as they like if they capture me. It was as Shen Qiao thought. Yan Wuxi had read the lost volume of the Zhu Yang Si, which means that he had already read three of the five available volumes. Most significant was the one that they had found in the underground city of Ruokiang, as it had specifically corrected and further supplemented parts of the Fenglin Yuendian. Sang Jing Xing and Yuan Xiaoxia both studied the Fenglin Yuendian, and naturally understood the effects of the flaws within the demonic core. Any day they went where the flaw was yet to have been corrected was another day that they could not cultivate the Fenglin Yuendian to absolute perfection. As a result, they would want the contents of this volume more than anyone. Had it been the Yan Wuxi of before, so at ease and far above the rest of them, his mere identity would have made them too afraid of the consequences of taking any rash action against him. But the present Yan Wuxi had just returned from the brink of death after the five great masters made an attempt on his life. His Wujong was significantly inferior to what it was before. If they did not act now, then when? Shen Qiao understood very well the methods that the members of the demonic sect utilized. The reason why Sang Jing Xin wanted to ruin Shen Qiao's Wujong was because of the day that Shen Qiao had killed his disciple, Huo Zijing. He wanted to cut off his limbs and keep them as his trophies, and after recklessly toying with him, he wanted to give him to the rest of Hehuan sect to violate him. And considering the relationship between Huanyu and Hehuan sect in the past few years, as well as Yan Wuxi's venomous words and overindulgent behavior, the treatment that Yan Wuxi would receive at the hands of the members of the Hehuan sect wouldn't be that much better than that of Shen Qiao. Upon thinking of this, Shen Qiao's frown only deepened. If that's the case, then we ought to hurry up and set out, so that we won't get caught by them. Are you being this considerate to me, Yan Wuxi started, laughing, because you want me to be moved to tears and devote my heart to you. Shen Qiao paid no mind to the derision in his tone, and instead responded solemnly, I know that Yan Zongju has never cared for anyone. But this is a matter of life and death. Your flow has yet to heal over, and your strength has yet to be restored. If it were only Yan Shao and the others, then perhaps we could handle them. But once Sang Jing Xin comes, not even I will be able to ward him off. It would be best to be cautious. However, Yan Wuxi did not seem even the slightest bit disturbed. He simply fed a nearby branch into the fire so as to make it brighter, and suddenly asked a question that had nothing to do with anything, if you could do everything over again, would you still choose to let me save you at Banbu Peak? This question caught Shen Qiao off guard. He simply shook his head, I'm afraid that such matters aren't for me to decide. In that case, Yan Wuxi said, even if you knew from the beginning that you would have become hopelessly entangled with me, and that I would have personally handed you off to Sang Jing Xing, you wouldn't regret it. There is no cure for remorse, Shen Qiao said. For as long as we live, we will never be able to recover that which has passed us by. Rather than clinging to such resentment and never allowing myself relief, 
it would be better to thank you for having taught me how to see this world and the sentiments of its people. The light of the fire illuminated his earnest expression, revealing a rare sort of gentleness. Yan Wushi suddenly began to laugh. He said in a tender voice, Achiao, you're so foolish. When have I ever treated you well? He extended one hand in Shen Chiao's direction, as though wanting to stroke his cheek. However, Shen Chiao backed away, evading from him, while raising one hand to ward him off. Who would have thought that Yan Wushi drew his other hand over him however, it was not to attack him. He had merely brushed his sleeve past Shen Chiao's eyes. Shen Chiao halted his breathing the moment he caught the strange scent from it. However, it had already entered his nose. His body, which had already lost so much of its strength already, became even weaker. The other man took advantage of this, and closed Shen Chiao's ache appointment. When will you finally rid yourself of this ailment you have of letting your guard down? Yan Wushi shook his head. Or perhaps you've already considered me to be someone trustworthy deep down in your heart. After saying this, he did not pay any mind to how Shen Chiao stared at him, his eyes wide. Instead, he bent down and kissed the tip of his nose, before taking Shen Chiao into his arms and carrying him towards the Buddha statue. Only then did Shen Chiao realize that the other side of the Buddha statue had a deep recess within it. The space was not large, nor was it small. It was enough for a single person to sit cross-legged within it. Yan Wushi explained to him, as though he had all the time in the world, it isn't cheap to cast a full-bodied statue of Buddha. Many temples will usually ask to have the statue be hollow from behind, so as to reduce the cost. I had come by this temple before in the past. This statue was turned out in large quantities without much regard for the quality that it was in. Even the hollowed out inside was so lazily put together. Whoever made it seemed inclined to only carve something half decent in the front. But lucky for you, it's to your benefit now. Shen Chiao frowned, what do you mean to do? That year, I'd also seen the lost volume of the Zuyang CE stored in the Imperial Palace of Northern Zhou. But we're in a hurry now. There isn't any time for me to recite it to you. If you wish to see it, then look for Yuan Yang in Chang'an. He has met you once, and recognizes your worth. I'm sure that he will be willing to make an exception for you. Also, you must tell Bian Yan Mi. Tell him not to worry about me any longer, but instead have him take advantage of the fact that Zhou has an ex Qi, and extend Huan Yu's sex influence over Qi before thinking of anything else. Shen Qiao's expression suddenly darkened, I'm not a member of Huan Yu's sect. You should be the one saying all of this yourself. What does this have to do with me? Yan Wushi laughed, but did not speak. He simply stroked Shen Chiao's cheek. This action he performed slowly, and with great care, as if he wanted to take in the sensation of the tips of his fingers brushing the other man's skin. The atmosphere took on an indescribable ambiguity. He was unexpectedly met with the sight of both Shen Chiao's cheeks slowly becoming dyed a faint, soft red. Our Achiao is ever so beautiful. No wonder even that girl Bai Rong has taken such a liking to you. With her around, she will certainly help conceal your whereabouts just as well. She won't let you fall into the hands of Yan Shao and the rest. If Shen Qiao still didn't understand what he meant to do after saying this, then he would truly be too stupid. Yan Wushi. I did not go through the hardship of helping you escape this entire journey so that you could give yourself up in the end. Yan Wushi laughed loudly, I never regret handing you off personally to Sang Jingxin not then, and not now. Yet here you are with the opportunity to witness me experience such misfortune, and wearing such a grief-stricken face. Achiao ah, Achiao. You've really disappointed me. 
you should be rejoicing in my disaster, you should be celebrating deep inside. How could you possibly wear such a pitiful look? I can't keep myself from wanting to draw closer to you. He said this, and he truly took Shen Qiao's chin between his fingers before bending in and invading Shen Qiao's lips with his own, only stopping when he felt the other man's breath become ragged and his eyes glisten. All that I've ever done was for myself and no one else. I have never regret a thing, and this is no different. This isn't to atone for any crime, much less is it for anything as ridiculous as guilt. There's no need to think that you are indebted to me, or even mistakenly believe that this is something it's not. That would only make me sick. He wiped away the glistening shine of Shen Qiao's lip, before laughing in a low voice, I will wait for the day that you can honor your promise, and become my worthy opponent. Perhaps that way, I will be able to gaze at you a little longer. Shen Qiao tried with all his strength to reopen his ache appointment, but to no avail. Yan Wushi's methods were too sly. Every attempt he made to undo them were completely unsuccessful. Instead, he had exerted himself so much that sweat appeared upon his forehead and his face reddened even further, as though he were both humiliated and filled with resent. As he watched Yan Wushi pull away and prepare to leave, Shen Qiao was in such distress that even the tone of his voice had altered greatly, stop. The other man paused for a moment upon hearing him, before extending one hand to close his yayak appointment. Shen Qiao's chest rose and fell repeatedly with increasing urgency. His eyes seemed to be filled to the brim with clear, smooth tears, shimmering with a glossy light that could have moved any man. Yan Wushi bent down to say this in his ear, before laughing softly, you shouldn't wear such a face around other people. Otherwise, I won't be able to hold myself back, much less Sang Jing seeing. After this, he pushed the statue in front of a wall, so that the area where Shen Qiao was hidden seemed to have been joined with it, making him much harder to be discovered. He then put out the fire and, with a wave of his hand, caused debris to fall upon the area where Shen Qiao had been sitting, leaving no further trace that he was there. Once he had done all of this, Yan Wushi experienced a sense of impending danger, as though someone with a strong desire to kill were approaching them from far away. But for those who have reached a certain point in their studies with Liu Zhang, the reaction they have when confronted with danger is one that is incredibly mysterious and abstruse. A smirk slowly revealed itself upon his face. With great strides, he left the temple. His silhouette flew forwards, and in a moment, disappeared into the night. Moonlight spilled into the temple, illuminating the ruined walls and cracked tiles of the temple, bringing a weak light to the person that hid within the Buddha statue. His tears had finally condensed, and began to fall from his eyes. However, only a short moment passed before he was able to hear the voices of people from the outside, with Sang Zhang Glau's Wujong, how could he possibly be unable to capture that insignificant Yan Wushi? Insignificant Yan Wushi. Bai Rong laughed coldly. Xiao Shikshan, would you dare to say such a thing to Yan Wushi's face? Stop talking. Yan Xiao, who had no patience for noise, frowned, and continued, Yan Wushi left on his own, and Shen Qiao was not by his side. It's more than likely that he's hiding away nearby. And after having fought with us earlier, Shen Qiao had exerted a great amount of energy. He couldn't have gone far search this place over, and then we'll discuss this later. End of the chapter. Stay tuned for more BL.